there are countless Texans who helped our state gain independence and eventually become the 28th state of the USA. Many of them you likely already know, but I'm here today to tell you about someone you maybe haven't heard about, but you certainly should know and hopefully will soon remember. I want you to meet Jose Antonio Navarro. Born in San Antonio in 1795, Navarro had plenty of political roots in the family. Well, and plenty of siblings, 11 to be exact. Navarro taught himself law and built himself up into a successful merchant, rancher, and land investor. Navarro started to make a name for himself in the early 1830s when he represented Texas in a very unique way. While many of Navarro's friends and peers fought at the Battle of the Alamo, he was here at the Washington on the Brazos as these Texans worked to gain their independence. Not only was Navarro the only native Texan to work on the committee that originally wrote the Constitution for the Republic of Texas, he was only one of two native Texans to help draft and sign the Texas Declaration of Independence. Now with their independence, these Texans were wanting more, which led to the Santa Fe Expedition of 1841. <laughs> The second elected president of the Republic of Texas, Mirabeau Bonaparte Lamar, organized a plan to head down to eastern New Mexico and convince them to secede from Mexico and join the Republic of Texas. This is an official letter from Lamar about the expedition, in part written to Jose Antonio Navarro. Navarro initially didn't like the plan, but many believe Bonaparte played on Navarro's devotion to Texas, convincing him to take the journey. The plan not only fell apart, it was a disaster. Navarro and other members were captured and taken prisoners by the Mexican authorities. Navarro himself underwent intense interrogations. He was even offered a government position if he would renounce his allegiance to Texas. He said something that is now found here on the entrance wall of our state's official history museum in Austin. He proclaimed, I will never forsake Texas and her cause. I am her son. Think about that. This man was facing potential death and all he had to do was say something against his home, his Texas, and he would live, but he wouldn't do it. That's something deeper than being proud of where you're from. Navarro was convicted of treason and sentenced to death before the military Supreme Court overturned the verdict and sentenced him to life imprisonment. He was transferred here to the most dreaded prison in Veracruz, most commonly known as a prison of living death, a place in which no one was left alive. But after four years in this dungeon, Navarro escaped. Some stories tell of a miraculous escape, but it is most likely that family and friends bribed the prison guards for his release. Even so, it was around this time Navarro got the nickname the White Dove, being regarded as a man of peace who escaped death and prison. Navarro returned home considered a hero, earning respect from leaders such as good friend Stephen F. Austin and colleague Sam Houston. Navarro went on to have many important pieces of writing that capture the history of what Texas was and became. He is considered the first Tejano to write about the history of Texas. He also saw the need to correct the versions of local history that ignored, diminished, or incorrectly reported the historical contributions of Tejanos. Navarro also served in many different capacities through the years at the local, state, and national level. During his lifetime, there were six changes of government, a Spanish colony, a Mexican state, an independence republic, an American state, a Confederate state, and then once again, an American state. Navarro eventually lived full-time in San Antonio, near where he was born. That's where he died in 1871. Now this might have been nearly 150 years ago, but that doesn't diminish the type of impact he still has today. With more than 500 Nevado descendants throughout Texas and other states, there are plenty of things named after him. 
like here at Navarro Street in San Antonio and the Navarro Schoolhouse, also in San Antonio. For those in North Texas, if you live in Navarro County, yep, that's named after him as well. Corsicana, a city within that county, is named in memory of his father's birthplace of Corsica. In 1936, the Texas Centennial Commission placed this large bronze statue of Navarro that now sits in front of the Navarro County Courthouse. It's not just about streets and cities and statues. It's about the people, the people who won't let the memory of this man fade away. The nonprofit, the Friends of Casa Navarro, was founded by his great-great-granddaughter, Sylvia Navarro Tillotson, in 2006. This organization is dedicated to enhancing the profile, legacy, and accomplishments of the Navarro name. While they make sure to celebrate his birthday every year with people coming from around the state and country, they also are focused on scholarships for the younger generations and making sure to find ways to educate people on what Navarro did for Texas independence. The nonprofit's leaders also helped enhance San Antonio's Casa Navarro State Historic Site, turning it into a more interactive historical experience, allowing everyone to remember who Jose Antonio Navarro was. Navarro was a self-taught man who fought for what he believed in and didn't know how to go through life any other way. He helped Texas gain its independence and inevitably helped us become a part of the country we live in today. And if this story didn't make you understand what Navarro means to Texas and Texas means to Navarro, I'd like to read you a piece from his obituary. To none of her greatest statesmen, nor to her many eminent patriots, is Texas more indebted for her existence as a republic than Jose Antonio Navarro. His memory will be cherished with the fondest regard.